many different types of motors are coming out and the Cork is arguably one of the most efficient motors on the market. With a peak power of 250 kilowatts at 600 newton meters, it is no doubt one of the highest performing motors on the market. For the most part, the Quark is an actual flux design, but I will get to that in a little bit. The radial flux design has been around for a long time. Due to its lower cost and simplicity, it has become the prominent motor up until now. New manufacturing techniques have allowed actual flux motors to be produced at a mass scale at a lower cost. Hence, more car manufacturers are going towards the actual flux design. There are numerous advantages, including a smaller profile, more effective flux pass, and basically this means that they're lighter but more efficient. But we have to keep in mind that any motor out there is dependent on a power source, which are typically heavy batteries. There is no doubt about it, this is a double-edged sword, because there is a balance between increasing range or keeping weight at a minimum for acceleration. In turn, it is kind of hard to compare an electric vehicle to a combustion engine, because the motor is always going to be tied to the power source. And unfortunately for now, batteries do not have a relatively high energy density. One could probably argue that a technological progression in energy density in relation to the power source is probably more important than the motor design at this point. But regardless, there are many manufacturers coming out with their own tweaks on the actual flux design. The two front runners for the actual flux design is probably Yasa and Magnax. Yasa has been acquired by Mercedes, so they will be kind of derivative of that company. But Magnax has also produced one of the best power to weight ratio motors on the market. There are also many different variations of the actual flow motor. Infinium Electric has come out with a variable frequency drive, which utilizes a PCB stator to reduce the size and weight of the motor. Naturally, there would be skepticism about the PCB board, but the company claims that it can be manufactured consistently with an increased reliability over an iron core. But we'll have to see more about that one. Amperage can also be controlled, so this has a wide variety of applications ranging from a car alternator all the way to an HVAC motor. Another variant of the actual design comes from Saida. They have designed products which range from the high voltage 200 kilowatt AFT to the lighter 140 series. Once again, this motor has a diverse range of applications ranging from outboards all the way to incorporation in wheels thereby eliminating extra drive components and reducing overall weight. Another notable in-wheel motor is from Linear Labs. This particular design is more suitable for e-bikes, carts, and lighter vehicles. It's based on a modular design which incorporates two axles and two radial rotors. Coils are toroidal with a 90% fill rate, and each column has its own PCB core. The Hefty 45 series produces around 250 newton meters, and weighs approximately 9.7 kilograms. This revolves back to the cork motor, otherwise known as a Raxio Flux. Koenigsegg has come out with some really unique mods, including the free valve, so it's no real surprise that they came up with one of the best power to weight ratio motors. The cork produces over 600 newton meters or 250 kilowatt peak power. It does measure up to the Yasa 750 for torque, but it's also 20% lighter. The motor has direct cooling, and it also utilizes the air core technology in the rotor. But it doesn't really stop there as the company has just revealed a 1.5 megawatt inverter, along with a Terror EV drive which provides three phases to two cork motors. The upcoming Jamera will use three corks along with a 2 liter 3 cylinder engine to produce over 1700 horsepower at 2500 pounds of torque. But based on just what we have seen in the last five years, I'm sure we'll see more competition and even further improvements in actual flux technology. But we still have a long ways to go when it comes to battery innovation and developing a high energy density power source that is redundant. But furthermore, I'd like to know what you think about all these different types of motors. So please leave a comment, like the video if you enjoyed it, and also make sure to subscribe to my channel.